In today's video, it's about a very important and very serious topic. It's about high precision, mathematically correct and latency compensated sidechain compression on the bass. And it's very important for bass music producers, let's say drum, bass or dubstep. And it's more important than boring stuff like chord progressions and melodies or, you know, whatever content stuff like this. So sidechain compression is very important. And the more overlap you have from the kick drum and the bass, the less laughs you get, the less loudness you get, the less sales you get, the less plays and rewinds you get from DJs. And before you know it, you land on the streets, you hit rock bottom and you live from one sample pack to the next MIDI pack and nobody wants that. So it's very important that you know the numbers and uh, how precise some of the sidechain methods in Bitwig Studio are, right? So we want to check this in this video. So I use here a bass sound and basically a kick drum sound. Sounds like this. Sounds like shit, but we haven't applied sidechain compression yet. And we want to do this here with the first modulator. And this one is called audio sidechain modulator, right? It takes basically an audio input from a different channel. In this case here, it's the kick drum. So we use post. And then we convert this audio signal into a modulation signal. And then we can apply it here to the volume of the synth, of the bass synth. Uh, this sounds so much better. It's so much better than before. It's actually, I mean, track is nearly finished in my opinion. Um, it just needs some more sidechain compression, but for now it's good. So we want to check this here in the WAV file, how, uh, how much overlap we get. So we bounce here the, uh, the bass sound, post fader, no dither, 32 bits, right? And we then compare where the kick drum hits here and the bass sound. As you can see, there is some kind of overlap. It's actually 0 0.005 seconds. And this is way too long. If you are a bass music producer, this is basically ages. This is a complete track already, so it's too long. Um, so what we can do in this case here is, first we can use a different modulator, but sometimes you want to stick to the audio sidechain modulator because you use a drum loop and you don't want to cut the drum loop, you know, in different pieces, or you don't want to use a separate kick drum track, with some notes on it. Um, some people do that actually. Um, so let's say you want to stick to the audio sidechain um, modulator because you really like it and you want to extract the kick drum from an audio file. Uh, so what you can do is you can actually just use a time shift device and shift this here into milliseconds, let's say minus five milliseconds. So we shift this track backwards in time. But what you what you actually do here with this device, it says also in the description, um, indicates that the delay compensation mechanism is used to delay all other chains to move this one forwards in time. So you don't move this here backwards in time. You actually delay all the other tracks. So the kick track by five milliseconds. So this one stays basically at the same point in time because you can't move something backwards in time, right? It means basically that the bass sound should be playing before you hit the play button. And then um, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, so, so now we compare here the waveform of this one. Let's bounce it. Oh, that's, that's the wrong track. So this one here. So you can see this is much closer. This is the first one here without compensation. And this one is with. And you can see here the kick drum hits here exactly at 1.3. And there's basically no overlap, right? It's completely clean. So when you basically want to use this audio sidechain here, you can just apply minus 5 milliseconds to compensate you for the rise time and maybe for the analyzer part of the sidechain and yeah basically get rid of this overlap um, and you can also watch here the first initial seconds you can see here with the non-compensated one we get some amplitude and here you basically have no amplitude whatsoever so this is pretty clean actually in my opinion here so you can use the audio sidechain if you want to use it uh, for some drum loops and if you apply actually minus five milliseconds of uh, negative delay, then you can get rid of the overlay. Pretty fine in my opinion. So let's move this time shift device here in front of the polymer and let's see what this, 
what what now happens. So let's bounce here the base again. Post fader, yeah. So now you can see we are back here with the overlap again, right? The compensation is gone. It's basically the same as the initial test here. So using the time shift in front of the base synth actually doesn't do anything. So you need to apply it at the end of the chain, right? So let's say we have here this uh, side chain and you want to introduce some latency from some plugins, okay? So I take here a mastering limiter, newfangled elevate. And this one introduces actually 120 milliseconds of delay. So let's duplicate this here. So we have now 348 milliseconds of delay, okay? So now let's bounce this here again and see what happens. And it's still pretty, pretty spot on. So there's no, it's actually like the, the other one here. Yeah, it's kind of the same. So uh, the latency compensation graph here of Bitwig Studio takes care of this delay um, of these plugins and uh, counters everything and um, it looks fine to me. So time shift device at the end here and audio sidechain in the beginning ducking actually this polymer here works. So let's say we don't want to use this here on this output and we want to use a tool device um, that's here after these two VST plugins, right? Or three plugins. So put here, I put this audio sidechain on this one Let's move it here and then modulate here the volume. Let's see how this looks like. Uh, bounce. Also spot on. So this also works. It's kind of the same. It's actually no difference here. Um, so also using the tool device here with the audio side chain and a time shift at the end works perfectly fine in my opinion. So let's put this here into the FX box, all these uh, three uh, BSTs, and we put this here back at the front of the polymer. And now we modulate instead of this volume here of the, uh, the output of the device, we modulate here inside this tool device, right? So we have the modulator on the device itself, but we modulate the volume inside of the chain after the VST devices with all the delay and then we apply this to the tool. So the modulation signal actually needs to compensate for the latency of the VST devices. So let's see how this works. Post fader. And it's still pretty fine, my opinion, okay? So yeah, uh, we can also try and actually delay here the kick drum also with an elevate, right? So let's, so we have an elevate on the kick drum and also on the bass. We have three ones here. So we have a lot of latency in different places. Let's bounce this again. Also pretty spot on. It's actually basically the same. Nice. So it doesn't really matter where you introduce the latency uh, in this case here. Um, it's only important that you offset basically with the time shift device at the end and you can perfectly fine use an audio sidechain to duck your bass sound to something that happens on the other track and it's fairly spot on, in my opinion. Um, okay, so let's exchange this actually here for a note sidechain. It would be actually nice to have this time shift here then on this modulator itself, right? Would be nice, a nice feature. Um, so let's use here this node sidechain. So this one is not driven by the audio signal, by the amplitude, it uses actually the node informations, right? We have a node in here, it's not an audio file, it's a MIDI or a node clip. So here we grab the e-kick node clip and then we apply this here to the volume, okay? So it's pretty straight. Let's bounce this. So this is uh, very wrong in my opinion. So let's move here this, this away. And let's do this again. 
So you can see here, um, this doesn't work correctly because we have here some plugins in there. We get a lot of delay and it's compensated in some way and this moves way off. So in my opinion, this is a bug. This is not correct. Um, so this should be, yeah, removed. Okay. So using a lot of plugins here, using the node sidechain, um, no, don't do that. That's completely wrong. So let's apply this here to the volume of the tool device. Um, so it's after these uh, three plugins. Okay. Let's bounce this. So this looks more correct. All right. And you can see there's basically no overlap. It's just, you know, a fade out. So uh, I would say here, this part is basically the, the pitch envelope, right? Where you pitch down from an octave or two octaves higher down to your root frequency. So in my opinion, this is pretty fine here. You still want to have some kind of overlap. So if you don't want to have this overlap here, you can probably attach here again a time shift if you want to do it but but it's not really needed in my opinion and maybe choose your one millisecond or something like this and then bounce it again and you know there's basically no overlap so it's just offset a bit here so this is fine okay so Using here this kind of um, node side chain on the device itself and using some plugins inside of the chain of the device itself with a lot of latency, it doesn't work. You get, get into trouble, right? Don't do that. Um, side chain here, node side chain on the tool device at the end of the chain. That's how I do it most of the time. It works perfectly fine. If you don't want, to, if you want to get rid of these milliseconds of overlap, then you use its time shift for that. You can get rid of this. Um, we can also try, let me make it this test again. Let's actually remove the tool device and use these three VSTs out of the device and then modulate this here again. Okay, let's bounce this again, bounce. This works, okay? So it only happens when you put these VSTs into the FX box and when these VSTs introduce a lot of latency, then you run into problems. Actually, let's do this again, put this in here. Bounce it again. Yeah, that's a problem. That's not correct. So this is a bug here. And this is also what I probably report today to Bitwig at the support mail. Okay, so um, this is the, yeah, this is the node sidechain. Then there's a, another way, and I think this is the most precise way. So if you're a bass producer, bass music producer, this is your way probably of doing it. Um, you can use a segment as a modulator on the project or on the track level actually, right? And we use here no smoothing and we use uh, seconds. We use one shot and we pull this down, make this super steep, remove this here, something like this, right? And then now comes the trick. You can select here the track itself and then you switch here to uh, sources or modulation mapping by source. And then we can choose here the E kick, E kick. And this is also driven by the notes, not by the audio, right? So now if I play this here, you can see uh, we actually trigger this. So now we apply this here to the output itself. Let's see how this behaves. Small bounce. Also here, you can see it's completely offset. So, um, there's always a problem when you have these latency introducing VSTs inside of an FX box of this polymer. I don't know if it works. It's the same for all the other devices, but probably. So let's put this out here and maybe make this here a bit longer so we can see it better on the graph. Bounce this again.
and you can see this one here is pretty pretty steep pretty steep cut it's even earlier than the kick drum itself right it's but this is really really nanoseconds here probably not milliseconds anymore nanoseconds so this is pretty fine pretty spot on in my opinion um, so using here the segments on a track level modulating the device volume here and using VSTs that introduce latency but after the device itself um, we can then remove this here and again use a tool device Um, and then modulate here the volume. I think this should be the same outcome. Bounce this. Yeah, that's uh, pretty nice. I like it. Look, this is the kick drum here. It's perfectly aligned. So um, to recap this video, more or less, can use any method of side chaining, audio side chain. Uh, you can use the node sidechain, you can use segments, uh, which is the most precise of all of them. And they fairly compare really well and also uh, compensate for the latency pretty okay and good, or pretty perfect actually. Um, the only problem we have is when we introduce latency inside of the FX chain of a device. Uh, you probably want to do this. And I report this today, maybe it's just a bug, I don't know. Uh, we will see. So this is the video uh, for today. Um, I want to look into these sidechain methods and there were a lot of rumors and myths, you know, surrounding in the community, which modulator is actually more correct than the other. And I think you can use all of them um, for the audio sidechain. Like I said, you have to offset a bit by five milliseconds, but then you get it fairly straight and fairly clear um, as a sidechain. Okay, um, that's it. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you like the video. And um, I was a bit ironic and sarcastic in the beginning. I hope you don't. I hope you are not mad about this. But um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.